If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 7, starting in verse 7 through 11 that we're going to look at this morning. One of the things that we're talking about, one of the big pluses, is sometimes when we hear about the word prayer, we always think about the Lord's Prayer. But one of the things that happens is in this passage, they're talking about prayer. And it's not talking about the Lord's Prayer. Now, there are some people that are here that are very gifted with electronics. And then there's some here that aren't gifted with electronics, and I'm one of them. I know how to turn it on, and sometimes I don't know how to turn it off. Sometimes uh, you give in certain programs and you have to ask someone how to open a program and what to do with it. That would be me. But I've had people in my life that have come to help me with electronics, and one of their main sayings is, all this technology in the hands of a moron. And one of the things that happens is for you and me, we have all this power. We have all this gift that God wants to bless us with. But we have all this and we're nothing but a bunch of morons. Let's just be honest about it. There's many times that you can notice when an airplane is about to crash, when it's going down, people scream and cry, and even atheists will start praying to a God. But one of the things that we have to realize is that is not exactly how God has designed prayer. There's a thing that you and I are to do to be connected to Him. That you and I, to be connected in such a way that that power affects us. Check out. Verse 7 of chapter 7, Matthew. It says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open. I want you to look at the, one of the words here in this verse. It says, Ask. It is saying there that you or I have a desire. This desire is something that is translated that means when you come in this part of this verse, about asking, it is a, it's that you're inferior, not equal to. That you're coming before God. You're not equal with Him. You're below Him. And you're asking for something. And then the next word I want you to see in this verse is the word seek. It's a dedication. And that's one of the things that happens is there's times probably in your life that something happens and you pray for it. You pray for it for a certain amount of time and you quit. But if you notice here in this verse that the word seek is dealing with dedication. It means to look diligently, to strive after something. So you and I are to ask God and we are to seek to strive after it. And then you notice the next word in this verse that says knock. But check out something else about this word knock. It's a determination. It's a determination that you get someone to come to the door. It's also like the ask and seek. It's in the present tense. It's that you keep knocking. You keep seeking. You keep asking. But if we were earnest in our prayer... How can we, if we're not earnest in our prayer, how can we expect God to earnestly answer our prayer? Think about that. If we just go, oh, Lord, uh, help, uh, you know, and, and then we're trying to seek, we're trying to not, trying to get his attention, and then we give up. You see, when he sees our heart, when he sees that effectiveness about us, he sees that we're trying to seek his help. Not our strength, not our ability in this verse. It's not happening. Jesus, in the red letter, it says, Jesus tells us uh, we should always pray and not faint. Paul tells us that we should pray without ceasing. Do you realize that there is a power there? There's a power in prayer. You and I are talking to a guide that we connect with. Look in verse 8. You're going to notice here in verse 8, there's a result of this. It says, for everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. You see there, the word asking is dealing with receiving. You notice there, there's the word 
answer. The one who seeks, they get the answer. The one whom is seeking after God, seeking the answer, seeking the direction, seeking the power that he has for you and me. And then notice there at the end of that verse, there's a detention, attention. One who knocks, it will be open. You see, when you're knocking on that door, someone's going to finally come to it and open it. And that's him. Because he's finally going to show you some attention of that persistent knocking. Persistent calling upon him. Persistent pursuing him. Now look down in verses 9 through 11. It says here in verse 9, it says, or, one, or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give you good things to those who... Ask him. Do you realize that there is a comparison here that Jesus is doing? Jesus is comparing, showing a comparison to an earthly father giving gifts to their children. But he's showing here a heavenly father giving gifts to his children. Do you notice there that last part of that last verse 11? Look at it. It says, how much more then will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who? Who what? Ask him. How's your prayer life? Have you been given, if you are a child of God, and you know right now that you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're given all this power and ability and connection wire to God Almighty. It's just like having a, a, a top-of-the-line computer that can do everything, but you have no idea how to use the technology. It's just there, and you're not able to maximize it. You see, so many Christians today, they've been given a straight line to God, and they never use that line straight to God. I challenge you this week, you notice in the Lord's Prayer, it talks about Thanksgiving, and this is a week that we observe Thanksgiving. But what if you start counting your blessings and showing Him thankfulness for what He's done for you and me? Thanking Him for loving you so much that He gave His one and only Son for. Start connecting to the power source of Christ. You see, you, nowhere in that verse does it say that you're to do it for someone else. It is an action that you are to be responsible for for yourself. Now, it doesn't say what we pray for. You may be praying on behalf of someone. But part of your prayer life, this is what it is to be. It is that we ask, we call upon His name, we seek after Him, and we knock. And say, Lord, do you hear? Lord... Will this be answered according to your will? Not mine, but yours. That was Jesus' prayer. How would you label your prayer life? Non-existent? Existent? Would you say strong? Would you say weak? You see, only you know and Christ knows the ability of your prayer life. But this verse plainly shows you and me that he wants to give us gifts. He wants to give us, and those gifts are blessings. They're not little packages with little bows on them under a tree. No, they're blessings. But the only way to get those blessings, it says in that verse 11, the last words, it says, ask him. The only one that he's given this to are the ones that ask him. Because he knows those are the ones in whom love him. Those are the ones into whom pursue after him, who are committed to him. You see, there's a lot of times we can dress and give the impression of people that we love God and we know God. But he knows what's really on the inside. He knows those into whom really belong to him. Those in whom 
truly seek him, he knows. And those are the ones he calls his children. And those are the ones that whom are calling on him daily. And those are the ones into whom he's blessing. You see, you or I aren't going to get those blessings from the Lord until we connect to the source. There's a quote I found, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. I wrote it down and I want to read it to you. It says, The importance of this element of persistence cannot be exaggerated. We can't exaggerate it. Too often we give up quickly in praying. We pray once or twice for something, then quit. God checks our sincerity by observing just how persistent we are in praying. You see, God knows your persistence by how long you're knocking on that door. He knows your commitment at how much you're bringing that request before him. He knows that in your heart. So my challenge to you and to myself, why don't we start today realizing just how blessed we are with all that power and that you and I need to connect through our prayer life in a way we never have before. Then and only then can we truly get the blessings that God has for you and your family and me and my family. Amen. Only to those in whom ask him. Let's pray. Father.